Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In the previous video, we left Jeb in orbit of Ike, awaiting a decision of whether he was going to land on Duna or not, uh, or perhaps just return straight to Kerbin. I think I'm gonna try and land him, because that's more ambitious and why not. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot of suggestions from uh, comments. I, it seemed like uh, mostly people actually wanted me to return them, but I think there was only one or two people. Uh, I did get a comment uh, saying, uh, chastising me for calling uh, the sun the sun, and instead of Kerbal, which people uh, call it. But I have to point out that when you double click on it, uh, it says focus the sun. It doesn't say focus Kerbal. You know, so Duna is Duna, Eve is Eve. Um, if we go down to uh, Kerbin level and then look at the moon, uh, it is actually um, M U N moon, obviously. But it says the moon, uh, so the moon, and Minmus, of course, is just the odd one out. Anyway, but it is the sun, and sometimes I'll call it Kerbal, but the sun is also correct, so, so there. Anyway, let's go back to Jeb, and I think I will try and land Jeb on Duna. But first, we need to rendezvous with the station around Duna. So, we've got an interesting situation here. Uh, Ike's over here. And maybe I should wait until Ike's over here. Because when we break orbit, we can break orbit to have our periapsis there to match with the periapsis of this Duna mission. If I break orbit now, we're going to be sort of in an orbit like this instead. And that's going to be a radial difference to that mission. I think so that's that's my theory and I'm sticking to it okay uh, first let's make sure that it's not gonna be flung out by Ike it doesn't seem like it I think it's in the sort of harmonic resonance with Ike so it might actually be in a safe orbit right now okay so here we are and over here I want to add a maneuver to break orbit and uh, oh it's a lopsided though still I should have done it earlier Okay, because it takes this much amount of time to get to Ike Escape. By that time, Ike has gone over here, I guess. So, um, given that, we'll try and break orbit down here-ish. So, I'll go for another pass and we'll see whether the station really is safe. Maybe, maybe you'll encounter Ike this time. Hold on. Uh, yeah. It's encountering Ike and getting into a dangerous orbit, but I like the lower apoapsis. So I might let it do that and just boost its periapsis up. We could try and encounter it like this. I don't think that's a good idea. But to be honest, we're getting close to where I wanted to break orbit anyway. Okay, uh, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We can do that uh, 24 minutes. It'll be reaching its Ike periapsis in 20... This is weird. I mean, this is actually properly weird. And burn. Okay, um, I guess a little bit more. Uh, that's fine. Uh, we don't really want the station to have to lift up its periapsis too much, so maybe I'll bring it down more. 70 should be safe. I mean, it's not just safe, but also we need to have a little bit of room so that we can rendezvous. Everything's planar, so that's good. Even though that's been flung by Ike. Ike is uh, equatorial to Duna, at least. So it didn't impart a weird inclination to the station. Just sort of going in tandem here. Okay, I'm going to switch to the station now so it doesn't end up deorbiting itself. I wonder how much RCS Delta V we actually have. Oh, well, there's Ike. It'd be fancy if we could see uh, Jeb going out. It's a small, small system after all. <laughs> I mean, we could probably if, if if Jeb had a really bright light, we could see Jeb floating away from Ike there. But okay, that, that is fine. Um, let's target that. Uh, okay, that we we can see that. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay. So if we wanted down here to match orbits, it doesn't cost that much. Uh, we really don't want to have an Ike encounter, though. I mean, do I want to get into this situation here? 
I see the purple markers, these guys sort of lining up. What, how high is that? 200,000? Uh, no, it's too weird though. It's moving us into that orbit. I don't want that at all. <laughs> I don't want any of that. Um, hmm. Maybe since it doesn't cost so much to bring our orbit down, I'll use the RCS and bring it down more than that so that we can avoid the Ike encounter. Uh, it looks like Jeb is ahead of us a little bit, so we need to catch up. I mean, that's just 33 right there. That's not too bad. I'll just try and make sure that our radial bit is good. And we'll slowly phase with Jeb. Hopefully Jeb isn't going to... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go to this lower orbit here, which will be safer, and have Jeb do the rest. And it doesn't know in the timer that I'm going to be doing this with RCS, so... I think we have enough of RCS, as long as I have patience. There is a bit of inclination difference, actually. As long as we can meet up with it at that descending node, we don't have to correct that. Okay, uh, we're wobbling all over the place. You know what, maybe we can do the rendezvous in multiple orbits instead of just one. Uh, let's see. It looks like our periapsis is a little bit low there. So maybe at this ascending node, I'll boost that up and also correct the inclination a bit. I'm trying to be as careful with the delta V as possible. I don't know if I need to correct it, but it doesn't cost that much to do so. We're just going to take our time here. I'll have to look up the transfer window for return to Kerbin as well. Okay, well, one more like that, and then we'll have to reassess where we are. Okay, okay, so now we have to raise our orbit. And there we go, 0.7 kilometers, just a 5 meter per second difference, as long as Ike doesn't interfere with us, though. Okay, uh, how much does the RCS give us? Uh, I think it'll be enough to uh, just use the RCS from here. And since I'm within 200 meters, I'm just going to control from the docking port now. I hope the butt end of this isn't too close to the body, though. We may have to... If I can't dock properly, we're just going to have to go home. So there's not a whole lot of clearance, but there's not a whole lot poking out on the station either. Oh, and I, I generally, unless it's an emergency, dock assuming that I can't turn the target. It's good practice. We'll get closer and then line up a little bit better. Sometimes during stream, I'll just turn it and make it quick because, you know, viewers don't want to belabor things. Okay, right around here we can do the final sort of lineup method. So what we want is, okay, I don't want that stuff on. That's not too bad. And then we can proceed to move towards the target again. Get the prograde vector on the other side of the target vector. And we'll see if there's enough clearance. It's going to be magnetism. Ah, uh, that's all that magnetism. Wow. Okay, so we've docked. And let me see if I can transfer the Moonstone data into... Somebody said that we could transfer science, but I don't see it. Maybe there's something I have to unlock to make that happen. I mean, I know we can transfer science into a science lab. That's another thing. But auto-transferring science without having a Kerbal carry it. I, I don't see how that happens here. 
Well, anyway, we're here for fuel. Let's just focus on that first. I'll top off the mod propellant because we will have to dock again after landing if we want to go home. The only reason to transfer the data is if I'm worried about killing Jeb. But let's face it, it wouldn't have been the first it wouldn't be the first time I killed Jeb, so maybe I should be worried about that. Okay, well that doesn't leave a whole lot of fuel in there. Let me review stored data. We can transmit now. We weren't able to transmit before, but now we can transmit. So we'll keep that. We can transmit this EVA report. There isn't a whole lot of electric charge on the station though. Crew report. Another EV report. And there's another one. We got a lot of those. From space above Ike. We'll keep the surface sample. So all we have in here right now... It, oh, there's another EV report still. Ike Midland surface sample and Duna Ejecta. I mean, is that... Uh, maybe you should just have confidence we can bring, bring Jeb home. I don't know. It's a good question. I'll have confidence that I can bring Je bring Jeb home. So we're gonna go. Okay, we have two thousand seven hundred meters per second, basically. I'm not relying on the parachute for the landing, and I don't want to land on the nighttime side. Well, we won't be. We just have to deorbit at Apoapsis and we'll be able to come back down uh, in daylight, I think. I'm just going to skim the atmosphere to bring our orbit down. And however many passes it takes, it's fine. As long as we're coming down that general location. So, uh, I won't use RCS for this. We'll just use the engine. I haven't tried it in this version, so I'm, uh, and we don't have a heat shield or anything. But Duna's atmosphere is very thin. I'll try 29 and see what happens. I mean, if we don't deorbit, then that's fine. As long as we don't blow up. Not blowing up is the priority. Okay, well, there's the landscape of Duna ahead of us. It's been a while. It's been a while since I landed on it. We'll see how it goes. We're in the atmosphere. I don't know. That, that, I guess we could get a crew report. Oh, this exists. Ah, oh, shoot. All right, we, we won't do that yet. We can grab that crew report and on the way up do another crew report, maybe, if I remember. We're getting brought down like this. So that was a pretty good choice overall. Relatively safe. Uh, Why don't we... Once I get out into space, pop on over to the station and bring its orbit down somewhat to make it easier to get back to it. Okay, we are in space. Yep. This will be going just straight around. Let me switch to that. And retrograde. Oh, we didn't need you to use the RCS for that. Oh well. Uh, but I guess you can use the RCS to bring the orbit down. Let's see. Is it super effective or not? Again, I was a little bit worried about further Ike interference, too. This will avoid some of that. Okay, well, I think we're too far away from periapsis for this to be efficient, so we'll leave it be. And back to Jeb. Oh, uh, while we're here, maybe, uh, Jeb, could you EVA grab the crew report? Take data, board, and we'll do a atmosphere crew report. I mean, we could probably do a crew report here and it'd be new. No, it isn't actually. Okay. All right. So now is there a crew report that's new? Nope. Oh, this is still in space near Duna? Oh, uh, well, 50 is the atmosphere. Sorry. Crew report. All right. There's a chance we won't come straight down and we'll pass one more time, then that's fine. Okay, I think I'll give it a little puff in the retrograde direction and bring our periapsis more decisively down so that we really do land this time. 
That Terminator, though, I mean, it's quite a line. Oh gosh, I totally forgot. We have to land at a certain biome to get a uh, Duna Stone. Oh no. Oh well. We might not get the Duna Stone. We're just landing wherever. Could have could have done that, right? We could have had Jeb EVA and check out which biome it is, but well, now we have a we have a chance, but I don't know. We'll have to go back to the space center to see which biome was supposed to be. Well, this is Lowlands. I mean, I, I, I either it is Lowlands or it's a special crater because this is now real flat. This is a great place to land. Might not be a great place to find a Duna Stone. Let's see the. Okay, well it's uh, sea level too. Might as well be a sea. It's like one of those flats on Minmus. So will Jeb be lucky? That is the question. Okay, I need to retro. I think we should have uh, had a drug shoot. It might have been a little bit better. With a drug shoot, we could have probably cut most of this out. Final retro. Final landing burn, I mean. Uh, okay, uh, all right, and we're downish. All right, all right, Jeb. Here we are. Well, we'll get some signs. Let's see what biome we're at. I mean, that is a good thing to start off with. Oh, uh, you need to grab that signs first. Fine. Uh, crew report. We've already done. Okay, so EVA. Let's see what biome we're at. EVA report. Midland Sea. Well, that makes sense. Keep, take surface sample, keep, take all the data, and um, can you get these? Take data, yes you can. Take data, take data. Okay, and forward. So now let's log temperature, keep, log seismic data, keep, and log barometer, keep. And we can do the crew report. Keep. Okay, so we've got all that. Uh, Midland Sea. Let's take a look. And well, maybe we should just take a look around first. I don't see anything like a Duna Stone. There's scatter, but there's no obvious Duna Stone right around us. So Space Center. We might be in the wrong location. Duna Stone. Gosh darn it. Eastern Canyon, Midland Canyon, or Highlands. Well, shucks. I'm guessing that it, when they say suspect, it doesn't mean like there's a chance finding it elsewhere, is there? So alas, I have failed. I failed Jeb, poor Jeb. Went all this way to get the Duna Stone and couldn't pick one up. Uh, maybe we should have Jeb float around and see if he can find one just in case. Uh, uh, oh, don't, don't, don't do anything weird, Jeb. Oh, uh oh. I think we might have needed a ladder. Oh, okay, no, uh, with a jump. Okay, that, it's too risky. Oh, God. Speaking of risky. Ah. Okay, so, yeah. It doesn't look like the jetpack is very good here. So I'm just gonna, can we continue climbing? Oh shoot. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay, we'll need a ladder too. All right, that was interesting, but let's get back to the station then. It's right in front of us, so this is actually pretty convenient. Okay, go. Well, first landing on Duna, a brief, brief stay. Okay, just taking a look at our relative inclination there. Stop that, stop it. We're almost out of fuel. I think I should leave it like that for now. 
being too ambitious trying to get a quick rendezvous. Okay, prograde. Or burn. Uh, that periapsis is actually too low. That's probably uh, close enough for now. We'll get that. Oh, I was supposed to do that. Ah, uh, shoot. Alright, uh, I'll do this burn here. Okay. We'll have enough to get back to it. The question is whether if we top off with whatever is left at the station, we'll have enough to get back home. Okay, so we're target matching burn. I don't point directly at the retrograde marker. Again, we're going to try and push it towards the target, negative target marker. Okay, so paralyzing. I think that'll be good enough with all the magnetism that we generally have. Uh, well, that, that, whoa, 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 that, that antenna's a little bit close there. Um, hold on, hold on. Let's stop there first. Okay, what's with the antenna being so close? That's worse almost, but, but we'll try to retract it, we'll see. No, where we've attached. Okay. So, let's just take all the fuel. And there's no known science inside the station. So we've got everything. And now I need to figure out when we're supposed to go back. And hopefully our apoapsis will be in a good place for return. I mean, if we were to go back now, it would be. Because uh, we burn out pretty much over here, and then we'll just extend our apoapsis in that direction, but we are not returning right now. I know that that's not the right timing. So, back to my favorite source of interplanetary information, transfer information, uh, ksp.olex.biz, origin, duna, Destination Kerbin, do the maths. Phase angle negative 75 degrees. So Kerbin has to be 75 degrees behind Duna. I think the return should be manageable with the delta V that we'll have. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone with this option. It's, it's sad that I messed up and didn't take the correct biome into account and check that beforehand. I think that looks 75 degree-ish. It's supposed to be negative 75 degrees. I think that's about right. Okay, and off Jeb goes. Undock. Whoa, I think the antenna caused Jeb to fling off like that. Let me extend that back out. Okay, uh, say yes. All right, we have 1,123 meters per second. And... Predictably, our uh, apoapsis is in the wrong place. Uh, in fact, right now would be a good time to burn. The, apo uh, the ascending node is right at the periapsis, so that's good. That's convenient. We don't have to do a big mid-course adjustment like that. Oh, there we go. We got an encounter right there. Um, it's a little bit inefficient, but heck, what are we going to do with the Delta V anyway? We're going to be dumping it. Uh, so that's pretty good. It's more or less a home and transfer. Let's see if there's some fine tuning we can do here. I wonder if we could capture into manual orbit. I mean, let's say we go like that and add a maneuver. How much does it take to capture? Not a whole lot. Just uh, 418. So we could capture into orbit again. Interesting. We should have left some more fuel on the station. Anyway, we'll do the first burn first, and then we'll think about further plans later. I think we'll still want to test the heat shield and just come straight down. I want to know how that works out. Okay, here we go for the burn to bring Jeb home, and ignition. 
Not much sound going on. They lose in-game sound somehow. I think we need to do a little bit RCS correction, a little bit of RCS correction. Retrograde, but we're just coming straight down, so it's fine. And we'll go with the 26 kilometers that I usually do. Let's see. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, RCS off, so we're all set for that approach. Okay, we are in Kerbin SOI. There is Kerbin, there is the moon. Minmus is probably a tiny speck I can't see. And our periapsis is still 20, well, close enough to 26 kilometers for my purposes. So let's see what happens. How much velocity are we coming in with? We're already 1,000 here at the edge of the SOI. Okay, and service module or lander module, lander stage. It's not a lot of things, this stage. Whatever you want to call it, we are separating it now. Separation. Mm, separation. Okay, I don't have sounds. <laughs> uh, somehow I lost sounds. I think I opened something and sounds are no longer happening. So that's not convenient, but we'll just go with it since we're pretty close to the end of this part of the story. Definitely faster than moon or minmus velocities, but not too much faster. Mm, a little bit more than 5 Gs. Everything seems to be good though. We've got plenty of ablator margin. Now, as far as mountains in our way, I don't think there's anything too horrible. Okay. Parachute time. It deployed. Unfortunately, we didn't get the sound. Well, I must have done something wrong somewhere. Okay, full parachute deployment, providing Jeb with the peak G load that he has experienced in this mission so far. And touchdown. All right. Let's recover vessel. We at least should have the. Duna ejecta. I know I didn't plant a flag on Duna, by the way. Maybe they'll give us a contract. 962.4 science earned. And contract for Duna ejecta is fulfilled. No Duna stone, though, so we'll have to try that later. Landed pretty far away from the KSC. Jeb got... 30 XP and is now level 4. That's a huge improvement. So, we've got that. Um, I don't know if I want to unlock things yet. I might want to take a look at the contracts first. And see what we've got here. I don't suppose plant a flag on Duna? No? There's a guy we need to rescue. Or, I think Clauden... Well, who can tell. But, uh, somebody around Ike needs to be rescued. And somebody wants to be rescued with their Hulk. That's special. I mean, maybe we can do that. We'll have to think about that, though. Those weren't the Duna contracts I was looking for. Especially if we've got to retrieve the Duna stone. But we've got budget. We've upgraded the R&D building. Um, we could probably upgrade the VAB here if I want to. That's all upgraded. That could do with an upgrade. So that's 2.2 uh, million altogether. We haven't touched a space plane hangar. Or the astronaut complex, we need a little bit more. But I'll think about that next time. So with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.